interesting because I know where they're actually coming from, so when I tip the audience off to what's really going on to their religious beliefs, it's always kind of fun to watch them squirm a little bit. Uh, or sometimes I steal their jokes and use them before they do, and that throws them off. So that's kind of fun. Um, probably the fastest talking debate the phone I ever had was Camp Holbein. Uh, this is just painful to watch. It's on the internet. Um, and uh, this guy, he, he had like 400 PowerPoint slides in, in his 15 minutes. I mean, it's just... Um, anyway, he's in jail now, so... Uh, because it turns out that in America, you can be skeptical of evolution. You can be skeptical of the Holocaust. There's, it's totally legal. There's one thing you cannot be skeptical about, and that's paying taxes. <laughs> it turns out you can't dodge that one by saying, I forgot. <laughs> I've always been really interested in science, but I have no that even I will look at a creationist talking and I'll look at a scientist reviewing it. And while the scientists seem more rational and logical, the creationists is so much more emotionally charged and so much more passionate about what they're saying, and it's clearly setting something to believe in, utterly, that people can't help but be sucked in towards the creationist side of it. That's what I mean. Is there any way to help with calm matters that to get them to look at the science side and see us being passionate about it? Right. Don't I seem passionate up here? <laughs> no, please. Giving it all I got. <laughs> well, she makes a good point uh, that uh, if you pit a scientist against the creationist, you know, the scientist has, the creationist says something like, there's no explanation for the origins of life. Go. And the scientist goes, well, okay, actually there's six different hypotheses. Let's start, you know, 20 minutes later, he's still rambling on, you know, and theory number five is, and the people are, and the, other, the creationist is gone, there's no theory for the origins of life in Jesus' logic. Uh, there's no Jesus' uh, Yeah, so they throw that stuff in, and uh, clearly that, that's a problem, uh, uh, you know, adding new... A great example, back to the vaccination autism thing last, whatever, a few months ago when it was National Autism Day, Larry King Live has on, there is his table, he's got this curved table where he sort of sits in the middle of one side, he's got a couple of uh, medical researchers that study this stuff, and the other side he's got Jenny McCarthy and uh, Jim Carrey, and uh, with the kid, and video of the kids, the autistic kids, you know, so you, basically you got heart and brain, and the scientists are going, oh, epidemiological studies show that there's no causal connection, the, and Jenny McCarthy, look at my little, you know, and, he, and the heart strings are tugged. And, well, that's, well, okay, so uh, you have to play the game. You have to, you know, make it more emotional. I mean, science has so much more to offer in terms of a worldview. If to be spiritual means to have awe and wonder and feel humble in the face of a, something grander than you, science does this in spades, orders of magnitude more than any religious worldview possibly can. Just look at any of those Hubble Space Telescope photographs of all those galaxies, you feel that thing? And you, wow, that's incredible. I mean, so if you want that, go to science. And so the passion of that is what we have to convey. I agree. Yeah, the, the, he brings up the Islamic uh, cartoons and, and the freedom of speech, but uh, don't, uh, they sort of sense they have a, a right to, to, to not be offended. Um, well, not in a free society, you don't. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. You want the one freedom, you have to, you have to give, give up the other. And, um, well, so this is back to what we uh, were talking about before, of you know not wanting to offend somebody's religious beliefs, especially if they're going to uh, put a fat on your head. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, you know, you say we're a violent religion, we'll kill you for saying that. <laughs> now, obviously, this is all the caveats apply, you know, not if most Islamic believers are not like that and so on. But, yeah, that's a problem. I think that has to change. Um, and, uh, and so the whole argument about separating church and state, uh, the best argument I've, I've come up with um, 
is that if you have on the books that it's okay for the government to give special privileges and taxes to the dominant religion or religions, what are you going to do if Islam is the dominant religion in your country in the next, say, 50 to 100 years? Could happen. It's already happening in France and Germany. Could happen here. Could happen in the States. You know, could happen. Still want the, the laws on the books that say it's okay? No, 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 America. No, 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 we don't want that. Right. The best thing that ever happened to religion is the government got out of the religion business and allowed it to flourish on its own. Uh, and so that's well, it does, <laughs> uh, and that's why. Because if you don't have if you don't have government subsidies, you have to go out and get it yourself, and therefore you have to become relevant and changing and responsive to your customers' needs. That's what American religions have done. They're, they're corporations. They should have to pay taxes. I mean, they're corporations, really. They pioneered telemarketing and and uh, their services and, and fundraising campaigns. They're professionals. That is. Wait, do you mean that you think that there's really a message in there that... No, I'm skeptical about uh, it being made up. Well, that's what I'm asking. Do you, uh, are there do you think Led Zeppelin, they, they taped it in there, put it in there? Because you can't do that. Okay, all right. Well, there, uh, the, I got that from a web page called reversespeech.com. They have hundreds of examples of this. This is just one. They have Bill Clinton's speeches backwards, what he really meant. <laughs> We know what you meant, Bill. You don't have to play it backwards. Are there reverse speech engines online so that I can check it myself? Say that again. Are there reverse speech engines online? Yes. Well, yeah, if you go to that one. Well, I don't know what you mean. Oh, where you just feed in anything you want and it feeds it back? I don't know. There probably is. Just Google it. All right, one last. Yeah, that, well, right. So if you go on Bill Maurer, is this, uh, is this a good thing or a bad thing? When he goes on about pot smoking and vaccinations and PETA and all that. Yeah, so it's a little dicey, but you do it because he's got a huge following. And that's, you know, that, that's how it's played in a free society. You've got to use the media just like everybody else uses the media. Um, so I think it's okay. I think it's a good thing. I mean, uh, Dawkins was on uh, Colbert. I've been on Colbert. It's, it's brutal. There's, there's no chance you're going uh, to come out looking okay. <laughs> I mean, he is a pro. He's so good. Uh, and they warn you ahead of time. I mean, he came into the green room and he said, now, you know I play an idiot, right? I said, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, he said, so I'm just going to interrupt you and, and, and so on. Just don't let, just talk over me. Fight that. I said, all right, I will. And, uh, and then he left and the producer came in and go, he means it. <laughs> and uh, don't try to be funny because you won't, you'll look bad. Just get your message out, you know. And they gave me the questions he would ask. And the first one was, it says here you're the publisher of Skeptic Magazine. I doubt it. Prove it. <laughs> and then they had like ten other questions, none of which he got to because it, it, it's very impromptu. And so, uh, you know, but basically Richard was on there with his book and he, he got in three or four points. That's all you can hope for. So just like a politician, you just do all the shows. You got your three or four talking points. Doesn't matter what they ask you, just say it. <laughs> that, that's how it's done. <laughs> that reminds me, Katie. Uh, <laughs> science is good. <laughs> no matter what the question was. <laughs> so, uh, oh, shoot, four guys just standing here. Just take one last one. Thank you. Oh, oh, way up there. All right, let me come back. Hang on, let me come back up to there. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how to respond to that. I think so. 
Yeah, Trip Cameron, the uh, child actor now, not a child, uh, is taking uh, Origin of Species and they're tipping in a 50 page thing about how uh, Hitler loved the book and, and it leads to the Holocaust and all this nonsense. I was thinking, uh, well, one response that I heard online was to take up the Bible, which is also uh, has its copyright uh, uh, infringement problems, and it's in the public domain, I mean, and, uh, and, and just basically have a list of the 50 things people have done in the name of the Bible or something like that. But that's a little in your face, confrontational. Uh, so I haven't formulated. If you have an idea, email it to me. Uh, I'm open. Uh, I think we should respond somehow.